myths of many religion about heaven and hell. Heaven, Marx called it the carrot used by the wealthy to keep us working hard for little money. After all, the real rewards are supposed to come much later. But despite what Marx had to say, the notion of happy afterlife won't quite go away. Here are six pleasant resorts the righteous can look forward to in afterlife. Heaven in Judaism as one of the oldest and the most influential religions in the existence, Judaism might be expected to be the source of our most profound notions of heaven, but it isn't. In fact, there is no clear indication of a heaven or afterlife in the Jewish scriptures at all, which leads to a lot of debate on the subject. Two typical positions are those of the Parsis who believe that there was an implied notion of an afterlife and the Sudasis who pointed out that there was no biblical evidence of such. Over the millennia, Jews have come to believe in various versions of heaven, some of which occur after the Messiah comes and involves the righteous dead come back to life. Overall, Judaism is more concerned with life in here and now. Hell in Judaism As with their views of heaven, Jews have an ambitious version of hell. The Hebrew Bible makes little mention of its except as a place where the spirits of the dead reside. There is however the term Genonim which refers to a valley in which children were reportedly sacrificed to the God. Eventually, this valley became a refuse dump that was constantly burning which provided a powerful metaphor for a place to send sinners. In later Judaism, hell is a place of punishment for unbelievers. But according to the rabbinical texts, they will probably stay there for no more than a year. Paradise in Zoroastrianism It was the ancient Persians who gave us the word paradise, which means a walled garden or park. And Zoroastrianism in particular gave us notions of the afterlife that were adopted or adapted by Jews, Christians and Muslims. Zoroastrianism is also interesting because unlike other religions, it claims that everyone will eventually get into heaven. Though it might take a while, the paradise of Zoroastrianism is attained the fourth day after death by crossing the bridge of the separate which widens when the righteous approach it. The righteous soul crosses the bridge and is met by a beautiful maiden who is the physical and the feminine embodiment of all his good works on earth. He is then escorted into the house of song to wait, await the last day. On this day everyone will be purified and live in a new world absent of evil and full of youthful rejoicing. The Chinvat Bridge in Zoroastrianism The bridge of separation as it's also known is the one that all people must walk after they die. For the righteous it broadens and leads to a beautiful maiden but for the less than righteous it turns its side and becomes like a razor. The ancient god Mitra is there with a scale to balance the good and evil deeds done during one's lifetime. And if evil deeds prevail, then the soul is tormented by an old hag before it falls off the bridge into hell. The torments of the evil go well beyond Dante's imagination and focus on punishment directly related to their evil deeds. Zoroastrian so hell may be the most horrific of all. And a text called the Vision, the Vision of Arda Viraf describes it in all its gory glory. Fortunately, everyone eventually leaves the Zoroastrian hell. They are purified and join the righteous in the region of the god Azura Mazda. Heaven in Christianity The Christian notion of heaven is one of singing and rejoicing before God in a new heaven and new earth. It also reflects Christianity's roots in Judaism because this new heaven contains a city called New Jerusalem and there are elaborate descriptions of a city in the book of Revelation. New Jerusalem has a wall and twelve gates and on each gate is the name of one of the tribes of Israel along with an angel. There are twelve foundations one each for 12 apostles. In fact, we even know the size of New Jerusalem, 1,400 miles square, 
with a 200 foot wall. The structure itself is made of all kind of precious stones, some of which have not even been identified on this earth. There is a river of the water of life which flows from the God's throne and the tree of trees of lifeline, the banks of the river, and produce fruit every month. Believers will have God's name written on their forehead and all the pain, tears, tears and death will disappear forever. Hell in Christianity Christian hell seems at one level to be a combination of the Jewish idea of Gehenna, where there is eternal burning and Hades, where there is eternal punishment. In fact, the Greek word for hell in the New Testament is often Hades and Jesus uses the Genena to indicate the place for sinners where the fire is not quenched and the worm does not die. The book of Revelation indicates that those whose names are not found in the books of life are thrown into the lake of fire. In fact, death and Hades themselves are thrown into the lake of fire in the end. In the addition to this text, Dante did much to embellish the Christian notion of hell in this inferno. Hades in Greek. Hades is actually the name of Lord of the Dead and the ruler of the Netherworld. But the name became so associated with the place that the two merged. So Hades is also the place the dead go. Hades rules this world with Persephone, whom he abd abducted from Earth Goddess Demeter and a number of other figures such as Tentos, Hypnos, Charon and Cerberus. Hades represents the place of eternal punishment for the evildoers, where the sinners are put on horrifying display. Such examples include Tritios, bound while a vulture eats his liver, Tantalus, thirsty and hungry but unable to eat the fruit just above his head or drink the water at his feet, Cispius, forced to push a rock up a hill only to have it rolled back again for eternity. Paradise in Islam The Islamic version of heaven is a paradise for those whose good works have outweighed the bad, as determined by the straight path laid out in the Quran. Heaven is a garden where the faithful lie upon coaches in a climate-controlled environment surrounded by bashful, dark-eyed virgins, just as the shattered eggs of ostriches. They will drink from the crystal goblets and silver vessels as immortal youths hover about them looking like scattered pearls. The believers will be clothed with green silk and brocade and will wear silver bracelet and they will drink a pure draught drawn from Allah's own source as a reward for their striving and patience. Hell in Islam The Quran, the sacred text of Islam, usually speaks of heaven and hell in the same passage. Perhaps in order to provide a dramatic contrast, hell is often described as an evil resting place and the fire. But the fire is just the beginning of the torment in hell because the fire is like a wall enclosing the wicked and when they cry out they are showered with water as hot as molten brass which scales their faces. It gets worse. The unbelievers wear garments of fire and are lashed with rods of iron and if they try to escape they are dragged back and told to taste the torment of the conflagration. Moksha in Hinduism Eastern religions don't really have notion of heaven like those in the West. Instead, they usually offer some kind of a release from illusion and suffering in the present world. The Hindu Upanishads are philosophical portion of the Vedas. Hinduism, the oldest sacred text, in them the notion of the self and afterlife are developed. According to the Upanishads, our actions connect us in this world of appearance, which is in fact illusory and the real is Brahman, the ultimate reality that transcends our sensory experience. Unfortunately, we live in ignorance of Brahman and act according to our illusions. This action causes us to participate in the cycle of death and rebirth, from which it is difficult to escape. Thus, you can escape your ignorance and release that ultimately you are not you you but Brahman itself, then you can achieve release from the cycle of death and rebirth and this is called moksha. Samsara in Hinduism Again, Eastern religions have a very different notion of the afterlife. Although in some section of Hinduism, Buddhism and Taoism, there are heavens and hells that are similar to Western ideas of the same. Hindu hell, however, is traditionally a continuation of life on earth called samsara. Samsara is the endless cycle of death and rebirth, 
that is the result of our ignorance of the ultimate reality of the universe. The word means to wander across as in lifetimes and samsara is the result of karma or actions taken in this life that will determine the nature of one's rebirth and caste one is born into. Nirvana in Buddhism one of the four noble truths of Buddha is that suffering is caused by desire, the desire to have but also the desire to be. Desire is thana or a burning that keeps us caught in the web of illusion that is our ego. Buddha thought that the desire is the flame that burns us, causing suffering and keeping us tied to the cycle of death and rebirth because the flame continues burning in to the next life. What we hope for is nirvana, extinguishing of that flame, which is also the end of suffering. The Bardo in Tibetan Buddhism, one of the most detailed and elaborate descriptions of the afterlife is from the Tibetan Buddhist text Barod Todol or the Tibetan Book of the Dead. As the title suggests, the book deals with the dying or more accurately with the state of between and there are many betweens, birth and death, sleeping and waking, walking and trance and three others within the death rebirth between. The Bardo Todol teaches that after death, the soul exists in the bardo for 49 days, in between that can lead to nirvana or back into rebirth. One of the factors that influences the soul's ultimate location is dying itself. A good death tends to push the soul towards enlightenment, while the bad death can move it to, towards the rebirth in the world. Tibetan Buddhists thus spend a lot of time and energy in helping the dying.